G'day folks, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm being a little less crazy than I have been in the last couple of videos and working on something that's actually in budget for a change. And yet still a flagship. Today we're going to work on the uh, JVC Victor Double D 99. My plan for this deck is three videos. This deck and this, or not this deck, this video will be the transport service. I want to get that out of the way first. The Sony 666ES taught me very firmly that uh, it's best to get the transport done first and uh, wait on the capacitors until the transport's working. So that's what we're going to do. Transport service in this video. Next video will be electronics because there's going to be a lot involved with uh, replacing the capacitors and uh, whatever else it needs on the uh, electronics side of things. And then the third video, which will be probably a month or two in the future, will uh, take the cassettes that are incoming. I've got a batch of eight, I think, Maxell UD1 30-minute tapes coming. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of them, we're going to do a 3 kilohertz test tape with this machine, and then we're going to break out all the other direct drive machines, and we're going to see just how good these things are for WoW and Flutter. Or at least hopefully. I don't have too many other decks that can hang with this for WoW and Flutter, but uh, there should be something on the shelf I've got that can really tell the story on that. And, and yeah, I've also got the Double D7 on the shelf as well. Same transport as this, so... Uh, We'll be able to go back and forth between the two decks and compare how they do for WoW and Flutter. But uh, before we get into this, I want to give you an update on some uh, capstan motors from previous decks. I've got three of them here. We're going to talk about them briefly, I hope. First up, we have the uh, old capstan motor from my Nakamichi 480. You'll remember that this had a hard time with uh, speed regulation. In fact, it didn't have any speed regulation. But uh, it does now. I fixed it. The problems with this were twofold. One, there was a mechanical problem, and one, there's an electronics problem. Here's the electronics problem. This capacitor here is a TPO, 85 degree, supposed to be 4.7 at 25 volts. My tweezers measured this at uh, 7.5 microfarads. So uh, this was done. ESR was around 4 ohms or so, which is not terrible, but uh, yeah, this was so far out of spec it wasn't behaving anymore. So that's bad, but uh, there was more than that. The mechanical side of this had a problem as well, because this was so high hours. Basically, when I took this apart to rebuild it, both the front and the rear bearings pulled out of this thing. So, uh, yeah, it didn't go back together quite as well as I would have liked it to. Uh, it's got a wobble in the shaft now. So, uh, yeah, that's not quite the best result from this. So, yeah, that's that one. Next capstan motor is the one from the Pioneer CTF615, the one that was locked up and... Well, not locked up. It was completely dead and fried. And, and uh, I'll show you why it's fried. You see this? One winding is black and the others are not so black. Well, this winding is shorted. So there's, there's no fixing this motor at all. Cannot be fixed. Well, you could rewind it and probably bring it back that way, but... Uh, I don't have the capability to do that, and nor do I have the interest in doing that. I just bought two other capstan motors that are far better built than this one, so, uh, yeah, I don't really care about this. But uh, the big deal with this motor is, if you can see the part number here, this, folks, is the same part as uh, this one right here. So... Uh, what I'm planning to do is I'm going to take this motor apart again, the Nakamichi motor, and I'm going to try to find a combination of bearings that will uh, work properly. And uh, I'm not sure if I can reuse this because the brushes were all deformed because I threw it away in the trash. But uh, yeah, I managed to get the brushes bent back into shape with a couple of tweezers, so 
I might use this, I might not. But, uh, yeah, I'm thinking there's got to be some way for me to uh, get this motor to work again. And then I've got an extra one for if I need it. But the third capstan motor to talk about is the one from my, uh, from my uh, Sony TCK65. You'll remember this one was making a racket. And the reason I thought it was making the racket is because the uh, thrust bearing in back down under here... I thought it was worn. It was not worn. In fact, the thrust bearing in back was loose. So what I've done on this one is I've... I took a nut driver, and I pressed back in on the uh, thrust bearing and got it to seat again, and then I built this little sarcophagus of uh, JB weld back here. So, uh, yeah, it's no longer getting stuck on the windings. So this motor is ready to go back to work. I've checked all four coils in there. They're fine. So, uh, yeah, it's been recapped now, and it's ready to go for a special project I've got in mind in the future. But, yeah, that's neither here nor there. We've got to get to this uh, old JVC flagship here. So, the DD-99. Lots of work to do on this machine, and I've got lots of parts for it. These are the Chinese idlers I bought for it. I may have to use them. I may not. I don't know. These should be the exact correct measurements for it. But I've also got some parts from Fix Your Audio, including two idlers. I'm hoping these wor will work. They're a little bit on the small side, but uh, yeah, we'll see which ones work out better. And I've got pinch rollers. I've got two of them here. The deck only needs one of them, but uh, I just wanted to uh, have my bases covered, so I got the pinch rollers ordered. Two, because I've got this deck and the DD7 to work on. Same transport. But uh, you'll notice in here that uh, the pinch roller on this one has a proper centered bushing in it. So I'm uh, going to try to rebuild this first. It feels like it's possible to rebuild it, so uh, or refurbish it. So that's what I will do on this first. So, yeah. I did manage to get a quick look at the head condition with a with the microscope a little bit. It seems like they're in really good shape in this machine, so uh, yeah, hopefully that's good. But uh, I need to tell you now that uh, I have done some work off camera in preparation for this video. And part of that includes a thorough cleaning. As you can see, it is much cleaner than it was when it started. And another thing I did was I pulled the front panel off, which, by the way, you have to take the bottom panel off in order to do that, because uh, this there, there's a circuit board back behind here, and uh, the wiring is so short to that circuit board that you have to uh, get in underneath and, uh, yeah, just free that up before you can even get the front panel off. And uh, another thing I need to mention, you can see it right there safety lock. When you take the front panel assembly off on one of these things, there's a uh, a big metal sliding plate that goes in that is linked to uh, the timer control. Keeps you from pressing the power button. If uh, the uh, timer is set. So uh, yeah, that's going to uh, hang you up in there. Possibly, if you're not careful. So you got to watch that uh, that say, that little metal plate is back in place before you put the front panel back on. Otherwise, you can't turn the unit on again, which I found out the hard way. Next thing I did was I applied a light coating of Molly Coat to these sliders inside here, so these are working better. I'm not sure I'm going to leave it there because. Uh, Molly coat's going to attract dust, and it's just going to get dirty again, but, uh, yeah. You did see I had it powered on there. Let's power it back on. One other thing I did was, because we're getting in there to service the transport, I need to have the monitor switch working. The monitor switch in this is so flaky that uh, we were not able to get a, a good source of or not good source, a good signal through this deck. 
the way it was before. So uh, while I had the front off, I just squirted a bunch of Electrosol back in there to uh, hopefully work on it, get that to work properly so we can actually test it. But uh, all of these switches will need to be taken apart and thoroughly cleaned and probably polished because that's how bad the monitor switch was. And uh, this is no longer latching properly, so I'm going to have to look at that one too. And uh, this button is actually bent in there. So, uh, or not bent. One uh, tab is bent, so it's not really holding on the way it should. Anyhow, it is fired up now. We're going to give it a quick test to see the condition of it right now. And you guys are going to get to hear my uh, test bench speakers for the first time, the new ones. They're under the table. I would show them to you, but uh, this this video is going to take long enough to uh, to do. So uh, we're just going to uh, listen to them and not show them. Okay, so I've got my test tape in there. So as you can see, or hear, the switch is working. But as you can also hear, the idler is making a racket in there. It badly needs a replacement tire. Let us get started, shall we? Lots to do. Many much lots to do. And oh yeah, the one other thing I should mention. I did manage to get this bent a little bit back into shape, so the uh, lens is sitting a little better, but uh, I don't know if the glue I used is holding very well. I used super glue and it's kind of not wanting to behave itself. And because I've been rushing through too many videos lately, I think what we're going to do, or what I'm going to do today, is I'm just going to pull the, uh, the transport today, show you how to do that. It'll be the same video for you, and then uh, I'll come back tomorrow to do the actual transport service because uh, this board needs to be recapped immediately because I don't have access to it once it's back in the deck. So, yeah, so got a couple of screws up top here. Pull those out now. They're color coded, they're a teal color, it looks like. And before I forget, I will remove power to the entire deck. Now we've got to disconnect all these connectors here. We'll have to get gain access to the underside of it in order to uh, disconnect the audio lines, but uh, we'll, we'll get to that. As mentioned, this was worked on before, so... Uh, it's easy for me to tell where these connectors go again. Four for CN804. This is CN802, which is labeled. This is going to be CN805, I think. Yes. And 806. So those are loosened and got one on the side here. And hopefully I'm going to be able to sneak this out without taking the entire front panel back off again, because uh, I don't want to do that again. Okay, so... Tuck those out of the way and we'll get under the underside here. Make note of this screw. This one's a plastic screw, so... It goes back where it goes and nowhere else. Okay, off comes the bottom. And there's the bottom side of the deck. I am pleased to report that there is absolutely zero damage to any of the circuit boards in here, despite the uh, deformities caused by somebody apparently dropping the thing. But uh, yeah, there is quite a few spots in this deck where we have this nasty old circuit glue, so that is something we will address in the second video. Okay, now under here, something I want to point out, you see these blue Panasonic capacitors here? 
This is not good. These fail. And in fact, this is the only one of these capacitors in the deck that I found so far that is not leaking electrolyte all over the place. Okay, now one thing I want to mention before we continue. Well, we can deplug this connection first, can't we? Yellow and orange. This is, I don't know, could be playback, could be recording. Uh, actually, it's playback. Because uh, this side of the heads would be playback here, and then this would be recording. So we're going to have to get under there in order to uh, find the uh, the other side of that. But uh, this is why you have to uh, get under here to, uh, to take the front face off. You've got these wires here. There's enough slack in them to get by, but uh, there's also this ground wire right here, this pink wire. That has to be freed up in order to even get the, uh, the front panel off. So uh, remember that. But it looks like I can uh, potentially sneak this through without worrying too much about uh, other things. I'm looking for other mounting screws for the transport and I'm not seeing any. Where are they? All right, JVC was being sneaky on me. All the screws for the transport are up top here. So, uh, yeah, we have to lift this up, find all our transport-related audio wires. Here's a couple of them right here. Red and white for uh, record. They just go in right down there by these two big gray coils. Pretty much just saying that for my own future reference. I'm just showing where they go. And uh, the erase head, we've got a zip tie to cut right there. And now we can disconnect this. And I'll just show you real quick what I'm talking about with the uh, capacitors in this unit, because they are they are really bad. Let's see if I can find a good example here. Some are worse than others. And I should mention I've got the bottom panel back on as a temporary deal because I want to protect the uh, circuit boards underneath. Okay. There we are. I'm going to point this out with my thumb. You see this one? Look at the green corrosion around that leg down there. Most of these dark blue capacitors in this deck are like that. Except for possibly the one I showed you on the... Uh, transport board down there, or the motor board, I should say. So yeah, all of that stuff has to be recapped. Every single capacitor is, is leaving on this deck. All the Tosins, all the Panasonics, every last one of them. So yeah, I'm real glad that I only paid $105 for this tape deck, because uh, if this were as expensive as the TDV 931, I'd be somewhat upset and this wire looks like it needs to come up. I don't know where it connects. But I'm probably going to have to find out. Another zip tie's got to go. And we've got to free up the wire from in there. Do you like spaghetti? Okay, this is where this wire goes. It comes right up to this connector here. It's the one in front of the erase head connector. The erase head goes here. This wire goes up here. Try to unplug this so I'm not flexing the board too much. So that's unplugged. I think that should be it. Watch me be wrong now. Okay, I'm going to let that down, and I'm going to unscrew the rest of the transport screws, which are straight down from up here. They're also color-coded, like the other ones we took out. You'll have to excuse me. I only got like three or four hours of sleep last night. That's why I have to come back and do most of this tomorrow. Again, same day for you. 
Come on, self, you know how to screwdriver. So quit messing around and screwdriver. Okay, is the transport free now? Yes, it is. It's getting a bit hung up on the face plate, but it is free. Question is, can I get it out without uh, having to get the face plate off? It seems like it should be able to come off that way, but uh, I don't know. Okay, there we go. She's working her way loose now. making sure all my wires are freed up. I'm going to have to uh, prop that board up in order for me to do this properly, I think. Gently, gently, don't break it itself. You will be angry if you do break it. It is having trouble getting past the front panel, so uh, I may have to set this back in so I can get the front panel loosened up again. Delightful! Okay, I'm going to uh, ignore my own advice and hope that I've got enough slack in the wires here for, uh, for getting this transport out without having to uh, disconnect that ground wire. I think I might but I might not. So let's see if we can get it now. It's hanging up on the circuit board that's over here. But a little careful maneuvering seems to have released it. It's coming, just be patient. So all I can say is just be patient with this stuff. And I've got wires trapped. What are my wires that are trapped? Uh, looks like the, re the playback wires and... Uh, something else, a blue and a purple wire. So we've got to get the bottom cover back off to figure those out. Yeah, I'm feeling a lot less pressured working on this deck than I was with the, the 931 and the 666 ES. So I'll show you what I've been freeing up under here. And it's all these wires, so we're going to have to figure out where these blue and purple ones go and disconnect those as well. I think everything else is de-plugged over here. But yeah, I'm going to try to tuck these wires up out of the way and put the bottom panel back on, because, uh, again, I don't want any of this damaged, the circuit board under here. This would not be good to damage, because uh, then I'd have to buy another one which I've been kind of looking for anyway, because I want another one, but uh, yeah, for now, I just want to make sure everything's happy. All right, so we're on the other side of the deck again. I think these are the wires that we're looking at here. There's a purple and a blue one. I'll show you where they go for future reference. Blue one goes up here, and the purple one goes right here. So keep that in mind. I'll show you from the top down as well, so it's a little easier to tell. Okay, there's your blue by this resistor. I think that's a resistor, and this purple one is up by these transistors. So we'll deplug those, and we'll just get the transport out. 
feels like I've already been at this for like half an hour or so, which is probably the case. Okay, now we should be able to get this out finally. As long as I can get this uh, assembly out of the way. Oh yes, out she comes. Free and clear. We have us a transport. And this board back here is the Mecha control board. I'm going to have to take that off now and recap it off camera and then we'll pick back up tomorrow, I think. But I just wanna take a look at this and see if I need to desolder anything. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to dismount this board, recap it off camera, like I said, and then I'll put it back on the board and then we'll probably go from there. It looks like I have to have it dismounted in order to get to some of the screws back in here, but uh, I can worry about that tomorrow. Yeah. And again, we've got more nasty old circuit glue I'm gonna have to clean up and I'll do that now off camera. All right, folks, I think I've got everything done in terms of the uh, system control board here, or mecha control board, whatever they call it, I don't know. As you can see, I've done a lot of work on the backside of the circuit board here to get rid of all the uh, old nasty brown glue that was up here that goes conductive. There was a lot under this capacitor and some under here and a lot under here as well. And uh, this resistor was glued down. And uh, rather than mess with the capped on tape there, I decided to just uh, throw the resistor in a little piece of heat shrink tubing to uh, keep that insulated. But uh, everything should be good now. I had all the capacitors. I didn't think I did, but uh, then I turned my head, looked around behind me and saw the entire box full of additional DD99 parts that I'd ordered for this thing. So I did have all the capacitors. As you can see, the new 470 is a lot smaller than the old one. I did measure a few of the capacitors and uh, some of them were kind of exploring the edge of their tolerance, but nothing was bad yet. So good thing I'm doing this now. And uh, yeah, up over here with this capacitor, I just installed some some of this uh, PFTE tubing, I think that's what it's called, to uh, insulate the leads, and uh, I'm not even going to bother trying to glue that down. I'll just be careful when I put it back in. So, uh, in this segment, I think we're going to uh, tackle the backside of the transport with the uh, capstan flywheel and stuff, and uh, I may come back on... Wednesday or Thursday in, on another day even to uh, to deal with the front side of the transport because I really want to take my time with this. Even though this is only $105 this one cost me, it's still a flagship and I would still like to just go slow, take my time, and just not be quite as stressed out as I was for the last two high-end decks I did. But uh, yeah. So in order to get this plate off, over the uh, motor board here. I think what you have to do is you have to uh, take this board off again first so you can get access to the screws. And then I think what happens is you hinge it from the back here and come off and just sort of hinge it up this way. But uh, there's something I'm gonna have to disconnect first, I think. If you see this, the uh, real motor is set up using two big resistors and the wire co colors are identical. So uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be uh, desoldering these resistors just so the leads don't break when I hinge this thing up and out of the way. And then I think what I'll do is I'll try to uh, mark one resistor like maybe this one with a, a green marker and hopefully I can get it right the first time when it goes back together. Otherwise, I think you can reverse these two leads if you have to when the deck's put back together. So I'm not really that worried about that, but uh, 
there's some stuff we need to uh, tackle on the front side of this before we go ahead and do that. Because uh, one thing I wanted to do was take a whole day to examine the transport and see how it goes together and stuff. And you should be aware that there is a back tension belt on this model. That's how it establishes back tensions, with a little tiny belt. And I wanted to see if I could change that belt without having to take this whole transport out of the deck. And you can do it. It's a little tricky, so I need to show you how to do it. First off, ejecto mundo. And the second thing we got to do is we have to loosen the beauty plate. You cannot take this off with the deck in the or with the transport in the deck. It's not possible. But what you can do is you can loosen it enough to get at that back tension belt, I think. I've already tried it. I've had that belt off without taking this beauty plate off entirely. But uh, yeah, I'll show you how to do it real quick here before we get to the back side of the transport. In order to completely remove this beauty plate, this side panel has to come off, this one right here. This is the, the one that holds the door on the uh, left side here. It's opposite the, from the way most decks usually do it. It's on the left instead of on the right. And why am I zooming in? I need to be zoomed out for this. But uh, yeah, I'll show you how to get it off because I'm going to want to have the door off anyway. And I would like this uh, side panel to remain on to protect the heads while I've got it flipped over upside down stuff. Okay, so releasing the beauty plate. There's this ground strap here you have to be aware of. I'll be taking this off entirely in order to do the uh, capstan service because it's just going to be easier that way. But uh, there is this ground strap and there are these two clips up here. There's one here and one back here. And uh, down in here, there are there is a slot on each side that this plate fits into, so uh, look for that as well. But I'm just going to go ahead and unclip it now so you can see how that works. And then you just let it fall forward, and now you can just about get access to that belt. See, you can pull it far enough forward that it will clear the uh, reel tables. That's possibly helpful enough, I think. And then what you want to do is you want to take something with a hook on it, like this uh, here dental pick, or use a bent paper clip or something. And what you can do is, uh, actually let me hold you. It's just a little bit easier to show. So the back tension belt is back in here, right there. And the thing about a back tension belt as opposed to like a capstan belt or a real drive belt or any other type of belt is you want this belt to be as loose as possible and still be able to turn the uh, little gear back here. This gear doesn't engage with anything. It's just there for back tension. But uh, the way to do this on this machine is uh, you undo it. I'll show you how to do that. Hard to do one-handed because you have to sneak it past the idler, like so. It'll go, don't worry about it. And now in order to get this belt out, you have to release the brakes. You can either do that with a, a, a tool, like a dental pick. You have to come back down under here and just pull it down out of the way but the easier way to do it is to uh, just push down on the solenoid for that, for the brakes. And I think this is it. Yes, it is. You can just see the brake actuation right there. So yeah, release the brakes, work the belt out, and then you can deal with it that way. And reinstallation is about the same level of difficulty. So, uh, yeah, that's how to do that. But uh, we got to get this beauty plate off now and the door off. So uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to show the uh, the right side panel so you can see where the uh, door pins go. There's one here and one there. I don't know if that one actually comes out or not. I think it comes out with the uh, the door itself. And then uh, 
it'll come off from here. So not too hard to figure out, just opposite the way of, mo of most decks. And then on this side, it's real easy. You can see where the pins are easily on this side. There's that one there and that one there, and that's all there is. I'm just going to loosen these screws. I'm not gonna pull this panel off yet. It does not need to be pulled off yet. I will have to do that to do the front side, but uh, that's easy enough. And then with it just loosened like this, I might have to loosen it a bit more. The door should just come right out. Easy peasy. And then the entire beauty plate will come out. So I'm going to put this off to the side somewhere next to the deck itself and then yep just like that. Couldn't be much easier. And now I'm going to retighten these screws temporarily. So now the transport has a nice little stand here that will enable me to go like this without having to worry about damaging the heads. And now we have to get access to the motor board and other such goodies. So I'm gonna heat up the iron here. And because we've got a broken post in there, I am going to have to ascribe where that post sits so I can possibly fix it. The one I'm talking about is, let me set this down in such a way that we can actually see it. The broken post is this one right in here. So I'm just going to scribe it and then I'll know exactly how it goes back in. Because I will be super gluing that back in. I don't think there's a way to... Uh, install a screw to permanently fix it the way I did with the, the uh, TCK 75, but uh, super glue should be enough. All the other posts are good, and uh, this deck actually doesn't need this post to be intact in order to uh, still function, as you saw when we started this video. But uh, yeah, I'll get started on this now. I'm going to set it down like this so I can do that scribing I mentioned. So I'll just look for my mark and I will reinstall that post with super glue at the same position it's at now. And I'm going to uh, disconnect the real motor now. Try and do this so you can see. I'm not going to desolder it, I'm just going to uh, Heat it up and move it away. And I'm going to remove this, this uh, grounding strap as well. Just because this isn't connected to the motor. It's connected back to the uh, circuitry through a wire. And uh, I just want things to be a little easier with this deck. Once again, thanks, JVC, for... Uh, making it impossible to disconnect wires or anything. Okay, now I'm going to mark that in green so I know which one that is. Oh yeah, that'll work. I'll be able to tell which one's which, I think. Okay, so the green one goes to that pin. There we go. Okay, where is my screwdriver? Disconnect this ground strap, which has never been off before. Ask me how I know. That was very tight. Okay, we'll pull that out of the way, hopefully without losing the thing here. And I'm going to reinstall the uh, 
the actual ground strap so I can see where it goes later, even though I'm shooting video and uh, that's not such a big deal. Uh, we've got another ground strap we got to undo over here. All right, so that's the one we leave in place because it's broken. I could have just undone it from this side. What, what was I thinking? Possibly I wasn't. And that screw has been out before. It wasn't very tight. So I'm going to reconnect the ground this ground wire from the place I just disconnected it at. Wouldn't be one of my videos if I didn't do at least one thing that was completely unnecessary, would it? And before I put this back in the deck, I'm going to go over the uh, system control board one more time just to make sure everything's good and there are no solder bridges or caps installed backwards. Because uh, there's really no working on that board otherwise. Okay, so I think I got all those screws out. Oh wait, I do have to dismount this screw. Because I have to fix it. Re-glue it back in place. So I guess I will do that. Okay, this plate is loose. So we can get it out now, but before I do that, board goes back in place. Just so I can uh, organize myself a little better here. Now when it comes to these solenoids, they have to come off now too, so, uh, well not off, they just have to uh, stay mounted to the to this plate back here and I'm just showing you how they go when you put them back on. This is the head block solenoid. They both pull downwards. So you've got to get them inside underneath the pins. That's really all you need to know there. So we should be able to just disconnect this now and move it out of the way. Hopefully. Some of these wires don't have a lot of slack in them, I gotta say. So this may be not so easy to uh, accomplish. Because there's a set of wires that goes down to the motor board here. And I'm trying to free up enough slack so I can work on this a little better. It might be that I have to uh, dismount the motor board again. And here's the uh, broken post that I'll be fixing. I guess it is fairly easy to see where it goes, so didn't have to scribe it at all. Yeah, I'm going to try to take the motor board, or the uh, control board back off and uh, try to manipulate it that way because I have to get this motor board off in order to recap that one too, so. I don't know if this makes anything easier or not. We're going to find out though. I don't like the way JVC has this. Couldn't they have just found a better way to install this in the deck? Isn't there enough room otherwise? Okay, I'll just leave it sitting like this and then hopefully I can get everything under here done the way it needs to be done. But yeah, this is why you want to disconnect the real motors because it just gives you more room to work here. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to uh, glue that standoff back down before I put this motor back in place. Or at least the motor board. I don't think the a lot of it needs to come out. So uh, let's do this. And we should be able to just pull the uh, motor board off now and uh, the coils and all that other good stuff. Oh, I see, everything has to come off. 
Thanks, JVC. And this means I'm going to be losing my oil control washer on the front side of the capstan. I forgot to uh, take that off. Again, I'm not real worried about damaging anything. $105 tape deck. If I break something, I can just get another one. And I almost did get another one. Fairly recently. Before I found that next quote-unquote dragon killer. Okay, where's that friggin' washer? Come on. Fingernails are still easier than the, than tweezers. Here it is. I will put this off to the side on top of my solder station. So it's well out of the way. And in order to get the rest of the motor off, we've got two screws, it looks like. One here. And again, this is the same transport as the DD7. So uh, everything we're doing here applies to that, that deck as well. Except on that deck, I have even more recapping I need to do. Oh, there's one screw I missed yet. Right down in here. Up it comes, just like that. Easy peasy. And now I'm going to have to recap this motorboard and uh, all that stuff. And it looks like the entire motor is self-contained on this. I love this. The service manual has you adjusting this by feel. And it looks like it's good. I mean the uh, distance between the, uh, the thrust bearing. It's supposed to be within about a half a millimeter, I think. And that looks about right to me, so at least by my eyeballs. And in order to service the capstan bushing, we're going to have to dismount this plate with the uh, FG coil on it. Uh, how do I do this and still have enough room to work? Thanks, JVC, for all the spaghetti, but uh, I'm tempted to just desolder these wires just so I can work on this. In fact, my soldering station is still on, so that's what I'm going to do. Okay, let me zoom in here. Here's where the wires connect. Black here, brown here, red there. So I'm going to disconnect those now. Oh, and I'm melting the plastic a little bit. That's fine. It's not critical plastic. It's not load-bearing. It doesn't have to be there to support a, a roof or something. Or a chimney. Or a stadium. You can see all of these are these little god-awful Panasonic dark blue capacitors. These are all going to be not so good anymore, so they have to go. These are the same type that are leaking all over the boards in the rest of the deck, so just got to get them done, I think. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, bearing service on camera with you right now. Oh, this has never been off before. I can just tell. When the screws pop like that, yeah... This has never been monkeyed with before. So all the lube is going to be crap. I really like the way this motor is put together already. Okay, we'll separate it like that. And I don't know if you can already see this... Uh, this grease that's back in under there, but uh, it's not good. Not anymore, is it? Good. So I'm going to clean that up now. Q-tip with uh, isopropyl alcohol. I'm just going to wipe it dry first. Then I'll go in with the uh, iso side second. Easy peasy. 
then I'll go back under here and I'll do the same. I should be using a fresh Q-tip probably, but I won't. And watch this. This is magnetic. If it picks up anything, you have to clean it up. And don't go anywhere near it with a soldering iron or anything like that, because you'll demagnetize it and ruin the thing. So, uh, yeah, stay away from it with heat. And, uh, yeah, this is... This is one hefty flywheel. I suspect this is why these decks are so good with the wow and flutter. Because they use nice, hefty, weighty flywheels. And you can see the balancing uh, thingers that they did for balancing this, uh, this whole flywheel. I would test that, but I don't have a way to uh, do that. I don't think it would be very easy on this anyway, so... Uh, yeah, we got to start cleaning and stuff, and uh, it looks like the uh, FG coil separates from the uh, from the capstan bearing plate too. So that's all well and good. I'm not too worried about that. Okay, so this looks quite dirty. So time to clean it. I'm gonna grab a Kim wipe. Because I have those now. Just fold it over so I've got a decently thick surface to work with. Grab the acetone. Because I have had times when iso alcohol wasn't enough on these uh, surfaces. My XK007 was so filthy that iso couldn't clean this up. So. And it goes without saying, you should watch for any washers to fall out when you uh, pull these things out. So make sure you do that as well. You can, you can hear I'm barely getting the squeaking, and it's only at the top side where I've already cleaned it once. So um, I'm going to throw away that Kim wipe, and I'm going to grab another one. And we're going to do this again. It's got to be squeaky, squeaky all the way down. This has needed doing for a long time. And this thing was still giving me 0.29% wow and flutter. Unbelievable. Okay, so the flywheel and capstan are both clean. I didn't show it on camera, but I went around the outside of it too with the acetone just to make sure it's nice and clean and ready to go back together. But uh, this is nice. I can service this bearing just sitting right in front of me and I don't have to worry about how to clock it once it goes back in because it's obvious how it goes back in. Ah, JVC was thinking. I like this. They wanted this to be able to be serviced. Okay, so I'm going to do the cotton pipe cleaner in the acetone trick. And it does not matter which way I go through it because it's going to be easy to tell. Or easy to grab, I mean. And that should be all I need to do with that. These bearings are going to be very dried out by now, because uh, this has obviously never been serviced before. Actually, maybe I should go through that one more time. I had to uh, clean the, uh, the capstan itself several times in order to get it to squeaky, squeaky level. So yeah, I'm going to do this one more time. Again, not going in and out. I'm just pulling it straight through because uh, these cotton pipe cleaners leave fibers behind if you're not careful. And I'm looking through now and I don't see any fibers in there, so we're good. I will get out my molly coat because we have to uh, re-lube this thrust bearing back here. And let me see if I can find a dental pick. That should actually be plenty right there. I is happy with that I is. Okay, where's my Anderol? I guess she is getting a little bit on the low side, but uh, still plenty there for like maybe a hundred tape decks, maybe. I don't know. Probably less than that because I don't have a hundred on the shelf and this bottle is, yeah, it's pretty far down. But I also spilled some of it, too, so got to keep that in mind. All right, where's 
Where's the dental pick I used to chase the oil through? Still sitting in the toolbox it was. And some people uh, will take the capstan and put a drop of oil down here and then run the uh, capstan through. But I don't do that. Reason why is it, is it results in uneven oil distribution. And with a deck like this that's never been serviced before, to this extent, that's kind of important. So I'll do this side of the bearing first. Run this in, kind of rub it around to get the, uh, the centered bushing in there to soak up the oil. It's probably best if you let it sit a while too before you reassemble, but... Whatever. Just get all that nice new oil in there. That's all we want to do. And you can see there's a bunch on the table here where I had that. So uh, I am going to let this sit for a little bit. And then I'm going to recap this board, I think. And then I'll check the, uh, the bushings to see if the oil is soaked in yet or not. I think that's the way I'm going to do this one. I'm going to give it plenty of time to soak in because... Uh, the way this deck is put together, I don't want to do this more than once. And another thing I might do is I might reattach that guide post, or that uh, standoff as well. But I will take the excess oil off the, uh, the back of that bearing. And the front. Might as well. Okay, so I'm going to put this off to the side and do the recap and I'll be back with you shortly. Okay, so the recap is all done. There are a total of uh, three 0 0.47 microfarad capacitors, two 10 microfarads, and one 1 microfarad. I used UKL on the 1 microfarad. The 0 0.47s are Nichicon VZ, I think, something like that. And the uh, two 10 microfarads are Panasonic FR, so these should be nice and happy. All 105 degree parts. Now I'm nervous about this control. I don't know what it does and I don't know how to alignment, align it because uh, the factory service manual says nothing about it. So uh, I'm hoping it's good where it is because if it's not, who knows? Could be a duty cycle adjustment for the uh, capstan control, but uh, I'm not going to touch it unless there's something obviously wrong because Again, don't know how to align it. And that was the problem I had with the TCK666ES, was I moved the duty cycle control on that one and had to go back in and realign it. And on that deck, I had service information. So, uh, yeah. Anyhow, I've checked the uh, capstan bearing. It's a little dry out front, but it's fine in back. So uh, I'm going to put one more drop of oil in the front of this thing just to be safe. And once again, chase it through. There are two separate bearings in this, remember. A front bearing and a rear bearing. You gotta get both of them. And that's what I'm doing now. Had a little bit of old oil run out of it while it was sitting. You can kinda see it there. It's kinda stained a little off color, but uh, I think I'm good with this. I'm not going to try to uh, do anything weird with it. So uh, I'm just going to take the flywheel right here. Zoom you out first so you can see what I'm doing. And then we're just going to put this back together. All oh, right, I need to put this board back on first. That's kind of important. Let's see, it didn't go on like that, so it must go on like this. Now we will put the flywheel in. Oh, that feels plenty slick. It's just riding on a nice cushion of oil in there. 
So now we can set this back down. And that should be fully serviced. Yeah, look how well this is moving. It's going to be happy, I'm sure of it. So I will reinstall the screws. Again, running them backwards until I hear that thunk, which means the threads are seated. I'll zoom you back in so you can see a little better. Screw number two, backwards. And there it is, thread is seated. You'll hear it and feel it when the threads grab. And finally, the last one. And now my favorite part of this entire experience so far, being able to put the, uh, the oil control washer back on without even having this reinstalled. I love the way JVC has this set up. So I'm gonna grab the oil keeper. Immediately lose it. Find it again, and then just reinstall it from here. I love, 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 love this. The way they've got the wiring aside, I love the way this is put together. I'm, gonna, I'm leaving just a little bit of a gap there. I don't know if you can see it between this washer and the actual bearing. That's kind of the way you want to have it. So uh, the next best part of this is being able to clean up the uh, capstan with the entire thing out like this. This is great. I love the way this is put together. Have I mentioned that? Probably a few dozen times. All right, we should be good to go on that. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, fix this broken post here. Maybe we'll do this on camera, but... Well, actually, I'll do a test fit on camera because I'm going to have to go off camera in order to uh, use my hands and fingers to uh, clamp down on this so it's got enough pressure to uh, to work the uh, the adhesive. And oh, one more thing. Some of these caps were drifting out of spec, so definitely good to change them. They're not leaking yet, but uh, they are old. So into the waste bucket they go. And there's only one way this goes in. It is like so. Ideally, you want to provide a lot of clamping force to this, but uh, I've got only my fingers to do this with, so I'm going to have to hold it like this for 10 minutes while the super glue sets up. And then that should do it. All right, folks, bad news. Super glue did not hold this stuff. Whatever plastic it is, it's not going to work, so uh, I'm going to have to go in with uh, JB Weld. That's the only other thing I've got here. It's just not holding this this thing in place. So uh, I will try it. That's all I can promise. Could be it just won't work and we'll just have to leave this post out or just set it back the way it was. So let me get to that and we'll come back. All right, folks. Well, there you see it. The JB Weld is in place and the uh, post is reattached. We'll just have to see how this works. I don't know if it will or not. I've... I think I got it straight. I don't know for sure. We'll find out the hard way. Probably in a couple of days because this needs to cure for at least 24 hours. And uh, I'll be going away tomorrow to do some shopping in the city. So uh, perfect time for me to take a break from this deck and uh, just go enjoy the day. And uh, yeah, just kind of de-stress and just let this set up and we can pick it back up in a couple of days. Okay, so this has been setting up for a uh, at least a day and a half now, so let's find out exactly how this worked out, this uh, 
little epoxy fix. Sometimes it works on plastic like this, sometimes it doesn't. For this, I think it's gonna work, we'll see. Don't feel like working too hard today, so I'm just gonna shoot this little segment and then probably put the back of this thing back together and uh, come back tomorrow for the front side of the transport because I just feel like relaxing this week and uh, rushing myself does not lead to relaxation. So let's find out. Okay, there it is. How solid is it? Oh, this is actually very solid. I think this is going to work. That's not moving at all. So uh, hopefully the uh, thread's still engaged. This one doesn't have this little locking collar that uh, this other one down here has. You can see it right there. So uh, maybe this will work. Maybe it won't. Maybe I won't be able to put the screw back in. We'll see. But I just wanted to mention something before we get to the front side of the transport. It looks like there is a little uh, split washer back here for some of the stuff on the front side. However, it also looks like this stuff is all bolted to a plate that also holds the, uh, the reels. And there's one of the screws there and there's another screw over here. So we might be able to get access to this from the front side. I'm hoping so because I want to re-grease everything back in here. But uh, yeah, I got to put this back together now. So uh, see you in the next segment. Well, folks, how are you liking the little service jig I made here for this transport? I decided I didn't want any, any risk of breaking anything on this circuit board. So I pulled out some scrap wood and a couple of angle brackets and made myself a little doohickey to keep this uh, transport out of trouble while we work on the front side of the of the unit. But before we do that, we've got some important things to talk about. See, I realized a couple days ago, actually yesterday, I'm losing track of the days this week, but uh, whatever. I realized that I hadn't run this uh, this torque meter in the uh, in the uh, big 931 tape deck. And as it turns out, I found something fairly important with these JBC transports that uh, I think we need to get into now because uh, everything about that deck sort of applies to this one as well. You'll probably remember me saying in the TDV 931 video that uh, there are felt clutches inside some of the reel tables of JBC units and this one is no exception. Well, and I apologize I didn't do this in the TDV 931 video, but uh, I finally woke up and realized that I hadn't run this thing in the TDV 931 yet, and I discovered it's got more problems. Namely, both the back tension torque and the take-up torque are improper in that deck, so we're going to have to get in there and look for that issue as well, aside with the head alignment issues. Yeah, on the TDV 931, I'm getting something like uh, 20 grams per centimeter on the take-up side, which is way too low. And on the uh, back tension side of it, the um, reading was actually off the scale. My torque tester tape can't go as high as that measures. I would estimate it's probably somewhere around 12 to 15 grams per centimeter, which is also way too high. So uh, in the 931, both of the uh, reel tables have those felt clutches in them. What happens is uh, you saw that rubber pad that comes and contacts the uh, take up reel or the supply reel in that deck well what that does is it holds the lower base and port in place of the uh, of the reel and then the top section can move freely which provides the back tension for that unit so uh, we're gonna have to get into that deck and uh, take a look at the felts and see if they're all in good shape and fix as needed I've got a VCR felt kit coming that should help but uh, in terms of this particular deck, we do still have a felt clutch on this side, but there's a back tension belt on this side, which is kind of slippy and not so good anymore. So yeah, we'll be replacing that back tension belt. But uh, in terms of this deck, I decided after seeing the results of the TDV 931 on the torque meter, I thought what I would do is I would quickly reconnect this transport back to the... Uh, 
deck itself, and then I would run this thing to see what it was measuring at for torque before service. And uh, yeah, we got an issue with this with this uh, take up wheel, with the felt clutch in this one. I'm getting 25 grams per centimeter out of this one, so uh, yeah, we're gonna have to get in there and uh, service that. But uh, we'll service both reel tables as part of this particular video. I used my uh, auto reverse transport as practice and I found out it's actually really easy to get these things apart. So uh, yeah, that's not gonna be a problem. The next issue we need to talk about is the head alignment. This thing's out of alignment. Let me zoom you in here. There, that's a nice good look for you. Basically what's going on with this unit is the same thing that's going on with the TDV 931. The record playback combo head is too far inwards, so we're going to have to adjust this. And I've confirmed that with both uh, my uh, alignment gauge and with the path checker gauge. In fact, I ran the path checker tape through uh, through this transport to see what it was doing, and uh, we've get, we're getting just a hair, little bit of tape curl around this part of the the entry or er, exit guide right there. I don't know why JVC has them on the leading edge of the of the heads, but uh, that's what it's like in this deck. I don't know what to tell you there. Over here, this guide is fine. I could tell this guide is a little bit misadjusted as well, but it's not contacting the tape and it's not causing any tape curl, so I'm going to leave this one alone. But this one has to be adjusted. And you might be wondering if I think that this is a factory defect or not. Well, no, I don't think so. Somebody's been inside this thing before and it's very obvious. If you take a look down here, you see an obviously glued post that has been uh, epoxied back into this little arm here that has been cracked in the past. So someone was in here to fix this. And I think what happened is that certain someone decided to align the azimuth, and he didn't know what he was doing. See, on this machine, we have a tilt and an azimuth adjustment on this one. There is, or no, not tilt. We have a height and an azimuth adjustment on this one. There is no tilt adjustment at all. The height adjustment is this screw, and this is exactly where you would think the azimuth would be because of that spring that's down under here. But no, this is... This is head height. This over here, that's the azimuth screw. And that has not been touched. I can just tell. At least I think it hasn't been touched. It looks like it hasn't been touched. So yeah, I didn't do the adjustment on the TDV 931 yet, obviously, because I don't have rubber parts for it yet. And uh, yeah, found another issue with it anyway that requires me to wait for these new felt washers I got coming in, but uh, yeah, before I put this thing back in the deck, I'm going to uh, adjust it with the gauge, with the alignment gauge, which is actually quite easy to do on this deck. I'll pull you out here so I can demonstrate. All you got to do to engage the heads is just push this, and it comes right up. So you can use the alignment gauge as you want to. Anyway, you can push this up high enough from, from the top in order to get the alignment gauge to uh, work with this. So... Uh, yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll align it with the uh, gauge and uh, dial it in electrically via the uh, azimuth tape. So that's what we're going to do there. Now I'm struggling to think. Do I need to tell you about any more things? Well, actually, there is something I could talk to you about real quick. And that's these little springs here. You're going to wonder if they're maybe flopping around loose when they shouldn't be. But uh, in fact, these springs engage with the door. So uh, just leave them be, just like this. They're on both sides. And what happens is the beauty plate goes over top of those. I can show you real quick here. And then the, then the door presses on those springs through these holes here on either side. So yeah, that's how that works. So don't worry about those springs. Okay, what else? Also, I did polish these heads. I had a look at them under the microscope, and I think they're okay.
not too much wear at all, but uh, the erase head here was filthy, so I polished it. I had to do it four times in order to get all the crud off that thing. Over on the record and play heads, I did one pass with the polishing compound because I don't really want to do too much damage to these heads. I just want them clean. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm happy with these now, and so we can finally get to uh, servicing this transport. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to remove the head block completely on this one because we have to get in under here to service everything in under there. All right, head block is about to come off. We've got three screws to do that. One here, one here, and one up here. And there's a fourth screw that we have to remove to uh, deground the head block. So I'll pull that one out first. I will replace the screw immediately just so I know where it goes. And we are off to the races. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the head block. I'll give you a little bit of a top-down look at how the levers and all the other mechanicals are, and then we'll continue from there, because I want to take pictures up here too, just to uh, make sure I get everything back where it's supposed to go. So I'm going to start with the, uh, the screw up here, which has a washer directly underneath it. Very tiny, don't lose this stuff. So I'm going to put those up out of the way. And then we'll get to these two here. Okay, there's this little plastic caper on top that sort of holds down the head block. And there might be a washer end under that as well. Let's find out. Yes, there is. And then the head block itself rides underneath said washer. So I'm gonna put those two up out of the way. All right, head block should come right off now. And yes, it does. Oh, I forgot to do something. One thing to make you aware of is that this is how the uh, routing for the wires are on this side right here. Keep this in mind. I'm going to have to remove this zip tie now, so I'm gonna to have to uh, at least put this on camera so I know exactly how to put it back, because uh, this part here moves, so we don't want anything that'll interfere with the action here and uh, destroy these wires. And I was looking at this off camera, and it seems like some of these need a lot of help. Like this one in particular, this arm here, it's not moving very well. So I'm going to uh, have to probably do the uh, squirt isopropyl alcohol trick back in here and then hopefully I can get some fresh grease in there. I don't know if I can. That's just riveted in, so uh, might be tricky. I might have to use oil instead of grease, but uh, that's for later. As promised, I'll give you a look at the uh, the mechanism in here if my gimbal will cooperate which it is not okay so this clearly has to come off in order to lube the uh, the idler assembly and I think that's what I'll do I'll try to remove the entire idler assembly so I can uh, service the tire off when it's sitting off to the side because there is a split washer up here that uh, those love to go flying, so I want to make sure that uh, I find everything. But nothing here looks too complicated, so uh, let's continue on. And now I will remove the reel tables, or at least try to. Watch me break it. Okay, so back tension belt has to come off first. I'll just loosen it because we're pulling the reel tables anyway. Now... How I did this on the auto reverse transport to practice was, got a bunch of grease on my fingers, was I took my cutters and I just went under here like this and just kind of pried them off. Like so. Just like that. 
find a place to put this stuff so it's organized. Should be a washer under here, and there does appear to be. Well, maybe not. Anyway, I'm going to pull back the brakes here. And off comes the reel table, like so. And I'll show you how to fully take these apart momentarily, but I want to service this part of the transport before I start messing with that. So, uh, and I'll do the other one now. Set those out of the way, and now we can get in here and do all the service we need to. Okay, we've got a little felt washer underneath there. I don't know if I want to put a new washer in under there or not, because I don't really have whatever this compound is. So I'm just going to reinstall that and hope it's not that important. So, uh, yeah. I'm going to grab my phone now, my other one. I'm going to take my picture. And I'm going to get started on this. All right, what comes off first? Well, let me see here. This, I think, would come off first. And thanks to my picture, maybe I'll even know where that goes back in. I want to lubricate all of this stuff. Okay, next up, I'm thinking this comes off. All right, we got some springs under here, so uh, keep that in mind. All right, that comes off as a piece. And uh, does the idler come off now? Yes, it does, and be aware of this spring right there. where it catches. It's just right... Ah, it's not cooperating now. But yeah, there's the spring right there, and the other side, I don't know where it goes, so... Uh, we'll have to figure that out later, I guess. Okay, back tension belt, gone. Okay, so this is the brake lever assembly. We'll pull this arm off next. Again, 105 bucks. I don't really care too much if I make big mistakes. Because it just means I get an excuse to buy another one of these. All right, now pull this one off. There's the repaired one that the previous tech rebuilt. And then now I can uh, maybe take up this uh, lever. Maybe not. Well, I can leave that in place. I can service that as is. Since we got the idler assembly off, I don't have to worry about having to take this plate off. Otherwise, uh, two of the screws are trapped. There's one under here and there's one on, an, on under the other side over here. And then it appears there are two more screws right here and right here if you have to take that plate off. Possibly the real motor has to be disconnected as well. But, uh, whoops, I didn't mean to get that out of position. And then, yeah, everything is going to get re-greased. So I'm going to leave this one in place as well, for now. I'll get to that later. For now, I got some work to do. Lots of it.
Actually, I think I may just go ahead and pull the uh, the brake thing off. Release the spring first. I'll leave that uh, little nylon washer sitting there just so I know where it goes. Well, actually, I can grab it now. But I want to get access to this other little uh, lever under here to re grease that. That's kind of tricky the way that comes off, but uh, off it comes. Just looking at where this uh, plastic piece engages, and I think I actually have to take this arm off now first. And there's a spring back here for that arm, so uh, make note of that. I believe I just showed it to you in the overhead shot, so I'm not going to worry about it just now. This is the arm that pulls the head block up, so it's very important to put it back where it goes. Oh, okay. That's as high as it will go without taking off this uh, door thing. So I'm just going to leave it like this, and I'm going to service it with uh, the access I have here. Okay, and then there's another spring I need to show you. This one right here pushes on this lever. So put that back where it's supposed to go. All right, we are already at the place and time that we have to start putting on molly coat. All right, I'm gonna set that down just temporarily because I got a little other thing I gotta clean off here. I gotta somehow access the uh, the mating surface in this metal arm to clean the grease off of that because I want to put no molly coat back in there as well. All right, this arm here feels pretty good. So I'm going to leave that one for now, and I'm going to try to get this arm back in. Okay, I need a bit more molly coat here where I can see that this uh, spring rides, or this arm rides. Right under there. Okay, that should be nice and lubed up now. Now I'll sneak my uh, molly coat in where the uh, the lever is, getting it all over the place. Guy needs about three hands for this part of the job. Oh, did I get it? I think I got it. Well, I hope that's right. Okay, what do I do next? Well, how's this moving? Actually, not bad, so I'm gonna leave that. Just cleaning off the brakes here. Best I can. Now, one thing I just noticed is this little washer here is cracked, but I don't think that's a problem for this. It's just used as a spacer in this, so uh, not going to worry about that. What I am going to worry about is the fact that I didn't put any molly coat in under the spring. So 
So I'll just work a little bit in now, like so. And I've already decided that since this is day six for me, I'm going to uh, probably just conclude this transport service and then conclude the video with this transport service. So uh, next video will be picking up from the uh, alignment and electronics perspective. Okay, what else we got? Well, I see something else. I got a molly coat. Okay, yes. Let's molly coat that as well, even though I already kind of did. So, let's not clean off the molly coat we already applied. That is a bit too much molly coat. Self, you could be putting some of this molly coat back. Yeah, I don't see any easy way to get this arm off. You probably have to take the, uh, the mechanism off that uh, actually pulls on the arm, but uh, I'm not gonna do that. What I'm gonna do instead is I'm going to leave a light coating of molly coat on the dental pick and I'm just going to uh, get it under here and under the top part over here and that should be enough and while I'm at it Do the same thing there. And then I can just wipe up the excess. Ah, my butter fingers could just, oh, we got a problem. We got a problem with that little arm. Let me show you. I've got another crack happening right there. And uh, the pin is able to push through now, so. What I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to make up, mix up, mix up some epoxy, and I will just uh, coat this so that pin doesn't go anywhere, just like uh, the previous tech did on this side. So yeah, I'll go off camera and do that real quick. So there you have it. I got the epoxy on, and we're going to have to let that at least cure for five minutes or so before I can even start putting this back together. And I honestly hope this works because. Uh, yeah, I don't know exactly how that's supposed to, uh... Well, it might work. It should work. I See, I'm worried about the uh, clearances. And uh, that was not good. Lost control over my situation here, and that thing went flying. Fortunately, there's still enough epoxy there. See, what I was worried about is that there's a little bit of a dome on this now and that it would interfere with the mechanism, but I don't think it will. As long as it's not further out than uh, this little collar right here, I think it'll be fine. So, uh, ah, averted a close call with that one, but uh, since we have to let that cure at least a little bit, like I said, we're going to move on to the real tables now. The supply reel is all self-contained and does not need to be taken apart. I don't think there's any magnetic, or uh, not magnetic, felt clutches in this side. So I'm just going to leave this one alone. The one we have to take apart is the take-up side, because this is the one with the important felt clutch on it. So uh, let me check my shot again. I'm gonna go up in exposure compensation, so. Take this washer off and put it up on the uh, jig for uh, for holding the transport. And from here, everything snaps apart. We've got this magnet on the back to uh, engage with the Hall Effect sensor, and there was a little crud on that, but uh, yeah, that's what that's for. We don't have to take this off. We just need to uh, take this assembly apart. And the way you do that is to pry them apart. 
But uh, let me see if this is like the TDV 931 first. Yes, it is. There's the spring. And then here's the, uh, the real hub thingy. And then there's this plastic pin that just goes down in from the top. So I'm gonna put those up by the, uh, the holder downer jig so they can uh, be out of the way. Okay, now to get at the felt clutch, we've gotta pry the rest of it apart. So uh, kind of intimidating to do this. I'm trying to get this underneath the felt and there it goes. It's just all friction fit together. Okay, so we've got our base section there. And then we've got a plastic plate here and then we've got the uh, the actual felt right there. And it doesn't actually feel too bad. So maybe the only issues with the uh, take up torque were on the uh, the idler itself cuz remember we haven't changed that yet. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this felt cuz somehow it got dirty. Thanks to me prying on it, some isopropyl alcohol. I'm just going over it with a Q-tip. Not going too crazy on this. And then I'll take said Q-tip. Oh, it looks like we've got another washer on the back of this little plastic piece that goes opposite the side with the felt. So uh, I'm gonna try to hold that in place. I'm just gonna clean this uh, plastic disc here like so. Now I'll put it face down for now and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find my brass brush and we're just gonna scuff up this felt a little bit because this is my uh, test subject for servicing the TDV 931. I've got those uh, felt washers coming but I want to see what this does for for the take-up torque. Just roughing it up a bit. All right, so Ghost of Tape Deck Future here with a voiceover to tell you that this does not work. Basically what happens when you scuff these up is it locks the whole clutch in place and keeps the whole thing from turning and uh, possibly eating tapes and the deck shutting off and whatnot. Now JVC's procedure for fixing this properly is to just replace the entire take-up hub assembly. And of course you can't do that here in 2024 because where are you going to find those? But... Uh, I think for a permanent repair, what you would have to actually do is replace that felt entirely. And we're going to try that. Possibly in the next video on this deck. Possibly in the third video on this deck. Possibly in the first video of the of the uh, D double D7. Or possibly the next video of the TDV 931. I don't know. We'll get to it. But uh, this does not work. I had to return it to the way it was before. I had to shave this felt down with a sharp knife and get all the excess fibers off of it before it would work again. So I'm noticing there's a little bit of lube on this washer here, probably for the uh, spring over on this side of things. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna molly coat that. Just a little bit. This part of it will not need much. Let's grab the uh, the other reel table and we'll clean this too. Like I said, not taking this one apart. Okay, now just want to mention this here is the uh, pulley for the back tension belt, so remember that. Okay, now we're going to go up to the transport again. And I'm going to officially do my molly coat application to uh, to the shaft here. And I've got molly coat where I don't want it again on the brakes. How'd it get there? Don't ask me, because I don't want to admit I'm the guy that put it there. So. Uh, 
How are we doing on this uh, felt here? It's drying. I don't know if it's fully dry yet, but uh, I want to put this thing back together, so we'll come back down here and do that. Oh, that's a lot of torque in there. Too much, maybe? I hope not. I think it should be okay. Anyway, let us finish this. Spring back on. Set her cap back on. All right, then that one's ready to go. Just checking sure, or checking to be sure my uh, pins and whatnot are out, not out of position, and they don't appear to be, so we're doing good. Factory didn't have any molly coat on here, but I'm going to put just a smear of it on anyway. And that one should be done. Very nice. And for the other side, we've got this little washer to go on first. Put entirely too much molly coat on. And back on. So hopefully those are happy now. And I can tell the epoxy is still wet on that little uh, piece. So uh, what can I work on now? Tell you one thing I'm going to do is start degreasing all this stuff because it needs it bad. For a minute there I thought we were in real trouble and that this thing was cracked, this uh, sliding piece. But no, I think it's fine. It's just the way it looked. Well, it's kind of suspicious. Oh, and it appears this piece even comes apart, so uh, I'll show it to you this way. And apparently this little plastic piece comes out like so. To show you real close, there's a little pin right there. And then yeah, this little uh, section comes apart like so. And I'm gonna keep it like that just so I can thoroughly clean and re-grease this because it looks like that piece just slides up and down too. There's a little tiny spring on the back side here. Or is it the front side? Could be either one, but no, it's the back side, I can tell. This side's the one with the little slider for the idler up-down adjustment, so uh, yeah, glad I'm showing that on camera because I might have to refer back to it later. All right, I'm gonna put that back together just so I don't forget where that goes. Grab my molly coat first, because uh, I wanna lube some of this stuff. And theoretically, that's ready to go back in, except uh, we gotta put that post back in first. I wonder if it's safe to do that now because we got to put this little sliding bar in first also. There we go. We'll just have to hope that the epoxy sets up and uh, there are no issues. Now i got to figure out exactly how this uh, sliding bar went in. One moment while I drop my other phone. That was great. Okay, that's how it goes. That's why you take pictures. Digital film is free. Use it, says I. All right, we are happy with that. At least I am, I don't know if you are. 
Yeah, let's get the old idler off now, if I can. Well, actually, let's get the uh, split washer out of the middle first. All right, smallest flatted flat screwdriver I have. Got a fingernail on it just to uh, hopefully keep it from flying. Just looking for the slit. These things are terrible. Usually I like to get these with my fingernails or thumbnail, but uh, I can't get my thumb in there to do this one. Okay, kind of popped out there. I'm glad I didn't lose it. Pick it up on my finger and I'll put it over on the on my little uh, jig there. Okay, and then there's a washer underneath and a uh, spring under the washer. That one there. I can get that spring to stand up. Okay, now we can pull this little uh, idler off and there's a felt clutch underneath, which feels pretty good, so I'm going to uh, leave that alone. However, I will grab a uh, Q-tip here and clean this shaft because it's going to be lubricated. Clean the felt a little bit while we're at it. Another one of them cotton pipe cleaners, and I'm just going to go right through the middle of the idler tire. You can tell which way it goes on because there's ridges on the side that goes against the uh, felt. All right, now we got to get this tire off and. Uh, See if we can find a new one. Yeah, I can't grab it, so I'm gonna have to use tools. And off it comes. Okay. Idler is about 17 millimeters external diameter and thirteen on the inside it looks like let me check this part twelve point eight and thickness is one point nine so two millimeters now let me find my uh, idlers here. I'll try the fix your audio ones first because they're the good ones. I'll just drop it down on top of the old one. It's a little smaller. So let's see if it goes on. Oh yeah, perfect. Went right on there. 16.7. That should do. Let me get the ones from China here. And we'll compare them with the uh, old one. Oh, that's identical. <laughs> yeah, these are identical. So uh, if the Fix Your Audio one doesn't work out, I know I've got something that'll work. So this idler is going bye-bye. It's hard and glazed and done. Little dab of molly coat right in the hole here. Just trying to get some right where the shaft can push it through. And that's it right there. 
I'm going to take a Q-tip, just lightly get rid of the excess, and that should be ready to go back on now. Like so. This shaft here, I don't think I'll do anything with because it's moving freely. But uh, we got to finish putting this uh, thing back together first. So the spring's going to go on next. Like so. And we're going to want to put some molly coat on the uh, other side of it, on this washer here. So I'm just going to do that real quick. Don't think I cleaned this, but uh, it shouldn't matter that much. Okay, so I'll get my spring here. And this is the hard part. It's the same way on some of the Iowa decks I've been working on in the past. Because now we got to get that little split washer back on there. I'm going to put just a touch of molly coat down in there as well. Okay, now the best way to install these washers is to just get them on a finger and just push them down. Sometimes that doesn't work though. Especially with a assembly this small. I think it's on. Yes, it's on. Part of the fun is just figuring out how all this stuff goes back together. Okay, I see. I'm going to try to hold on to the spring like this and just... Well, that's not working either. But I think I got it. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. Let me go consult the service manual real quick. All right, folks, I found where that spring really goes. It is, I need a pointing device, a socket that's right in there. So that's where that goes. Uh, I'm glad I looked, because I almost put it back where it wasn't supposed to go. I thought it was weird that they'd ask you to put it in under that plate, because we didn't see it on the other side, but... Uh, what can I say? Sometimes I am a little oblivious at times. Now, how am I going to get this uh, back in there is the question. What's the saying? Tweezers make the dream work. What? Teamwork? Never heard that before. Anyway, there we go. Come on. Uh, something's not right here. Okay, so it is easier with this real table out, but uh, there's one other thing I have to make you aware of now. The little metal plate that's on the bottom of this real table is a is just a metallic plate, and then uh, there's a magnet on the uh, on this guy. So uh, the back tension belt is actually driven by a magnetic clutch in here. So. Uh, there's a little wash, washer in between that metal plate and the actual magnet, so don't lose that. Otherwise, you're in for a bad time. So, uh, yeah, I didn't lose anything, so not going to worry about that. What I am going to worry about now is uh, the back tension belt, because we got to get that done. I've got two belts here from the Chinese belt collection. One's a little bit bigger than the other. And like I said, you want this belt to be a little bit on the loose side because it's for back tension. It's not driving anything. So here's the old one. I've already pre-selected the belts, but I'll go through the measurement process anyway just to uh, show you. The old belt is 42.1. So that's 84. And because we don't want much stretch... I'm not going to use the 1.07 rule. 1.07 rule 
as in divide the old one by the 1.07, is this belt. And it's the tighter of the two new ones I've got. But this one is a little looser. We're going to see if this one works first. This one is 41, so 82. And I bet you it's going to work. So uh, let me uh, toss the old belt. By the way, these are one millimeter belts, both the old and new. So we got to get it around the new pulley first, which means pulling the brakes down out of the way. I hope I didn't just get molly coat on this belt, but I may have. Now I'll get a dental pick. And I will just go through underneath the idler. Hook the belt. I repeat, hook the belt. Let me pull the idler down and I will try to get this in place here. If these little dang things would just stop moving around on me, I could have had this done by now. Now let's see if it, if it works. Oh no, it's not on the uh, pulley on the other side, I don't think. Or is it? It actually is. Okay, this thing slipped out of position now. All right, maybe that'll get it. No, it's not turning. It's caught on something. So that wasn't too hard to figure out. Basically, the belt was caught in where that uh, spring hooked that I just showed you. Just trying to make sure this idler is going to stay put now because it sprang loose and uh, I had to put it back in place again. But uh, yeah, basically what you want is with the brakes released, it's okay if the uh, reel table can't turn the, uh, the actual back tension gear or wheel that's up here in front of the idler. But uh, what you want is for, for that little tooth gear to be able to turn the, uh, or to just, be, just barely be able to turn the, uh, the reel table. And there has to be slip in between them. So uh, that should be good now. And uh, we can move on with our little endeavor here. Which I believe is replacing this little round doohickey up top here. So I'm going to get some more molly coat and I'm going to go around. The outside of this because we got to have some in here too just so the uh, head block moves around but we don't want any in the threads so that's why I wiped it clear like that okay now get the uh, the actual circular thingamajigger here and uh, my molly coat pick is way on the other side there and I'm going to just coat the bottom of this with the uh, molly coat. I don't know if I have to, but uh, I want everything moving freely under here. So let's make it move freely. And uh, I'm going to put just a little dab on the little pin here as well for the idler in and out action. That's what that does. And then this little round thingy should go back on like so. And I got molly coat all over the place up here, including down where I don't want it. Great. So how am I going to get that out? That's how I'll deal with that problem. Love these little tiny microfiber swabs. They're great. Expensive, but great. Okay, now 
I believe the next order of business is to put that little uh, C-clip back on, or E-clip, or whatever you call it. Annoying, that's what I call it. Just a little dab of molly coat there. Probably need some there. And presto, that all is all done. That all is done. Is all that done? Is done all that? I think so. And I think I'm going to actually move this around this away so we can get at the uh, rest of this here. Because you'll remember I took this other arm off, and this is for the, uh, the other stuff inside here, whatever it's for. I don't know. Okay, so how does this go on again? Like so. But before I put that back on, I want to see if I can do something with this uh, slider here. It does appear to just slide out. Well, kind of. It's binding up a little bit. And I see another spring. I don't know where it goes. So I'm going to have to figure that out too, I guess. That's why you take pictures. Okay, I see where that goes. That spring. It's one back in here. If I can grab it. Engages this little slider like so. That's what that does. Clean the bottom of this. Lots of crud on there, so good thing we're doing this. And I'm cleaning up top where the uh, where the little slider goes. Now, if I can get some back in here, that should do. And I'm not going to re-engage the spring yet because I want to take this little arm off and off with the arm. I'm just trying to pay attention to how it is. The flat section of the arm goes towards the capstan. Remember that self. And it's roughly in place. I will go ahead and molly coat this other little socket here. Or at least try to. Now we can move the slider and drop this into place. Like so. Now I should tell you a little bit about how I discovered this works. Zoom me back out here. A little bit. Anyhow, this solenoid that raises the head block only fires momentarily. What it does is it fires both solenoids at the same time, the one for the brake and the one for the, the head block, and then it releases the head block, and it allows the uh, mechanism to latch into place for play mode. So you can see it's latched right now. And yeah, that's how that works. So what is next? Well, we got a Probably do the head block now. Next. Or no, wait, I should put the other C clip back on before I forget about it. Otherwise, I will forget about it, and that will not be good. Please don't go flying, Mr. Clip. Thank you. Okay. Believe that's it. Well, I gotta put some molly coat on that pin as well, because it engages with the head block. That probably could have waited, but 
Why wait? When you can do stuff now and not have to do it later. And now we will do this. Pinch roller I will do off camera because I got to bring it upstairs to the uh, kitchen sink, I think. But uh, yeah, this sliding stuff in here, that has to be cleaned up. So I'll get us an empty syringe and uh, figure out where the heck my head is at. We gotta start getting rid of all this old grease in under here as best we can. We'll go underneath as well so you can see what's under here. Lots of old junky grease. This slot down here engages with the, uh, with uh, this post right here. So keep that in mind. Mind that and keep. Oh yeah, this grease has gone to the dogs. So I might have to do this on the 931 in a few years. But I'll worry about that when the time comes. For now, I don't have to worry about that. The transport in that deck is working well. Now we're going to flush the underside of the, uh, of the currently lazy arm there. I've got 20 millimeters of isopropyl alcohol in a syringe, and I'm just going to squirt it. Like so. That's already freed it up. And this one's already free. So that's working well now. Question is, how do you lubricate that after the fact? I'm not sure you can, actually. That's why I was saying maybe oil. But I will try to inject some Molly Coat in there anyway. I've got my Molly Coat injecting syringe right here as well. Yeah, this one's going to be tricky. This this arm that's that was sort of locked up. Got a little bit in there, I think. See how she's moving. I got Molly Coat all over the heads now. All right, I'm gonna call that one a success. I think I got just enough grease in there to make it happy. I hope I did anyway. Otherwise, stuff like the music search will fail on this thing. I was watching a video on Hi-Fi Rules' channel of a DD9, which is basically the precursor to this model. And it looks like he had trouble with that. That little arm that was stubborn here. And he had to get back in the in the deck in order to free it up. But uh, this one's nice and free, so I don't have to worry about that after the fact. Just got to worry about everything else after the fact. So yeah, about all I got to do is re-grease and uh, get the pinch roller done. And yeah, like I said, I'll be doing that off camera. So, all right, so pinch roller is done. Probably could have gone a couple more passes with the... Uh, brass brush, but I'm happy with the way it turned out, so it's going back in like this. But before that, I just wanted to measure it for you, just so you know what we're dealing with here. 12.8 externally, so it's probably a 13.5 pinch roller, which tracks with what I bought. Or no. I bought... Uh, 13 by 8 by 2.5, so should be 13, so yeah, that tracks. So 13 millimeters by 8.2 the hub is, the rubber is 7.1, and the diameter of the shaft, which is already cleaned, is 2.5, so yes, 2.5 millimeter 
internal shaft for that pinch roller. So let me get this back together and then we'll pick up with the head alignment. All right, folks, everything's back together now and I think we're all good here. So everything's moving very well. I'm happy with this. Well, I gotta dab a little more molly coat in something I didn't dab any molly coat into yet, but uh, that's easy enough. We'll just do it right now with you guys on camera. Just want to get some right in there. Anyhow, our next step is to address the uh, head situation here, and I'm going to do it from this angle so I can actually see what I'm doing this time. I don't believe this is a magnetic screwdriver, but I'll check it real quick. No, not magnetic, so I'm going to use that one to do my adjustment. So, where did I put my gauge? Don't answer that, because it's right here. Okay, head tilt is going to be a, be a moot point, because there is no adjustment for that, but uh, just drop that in place here. And because of the weird way the head block engages, I'm just going to uh, push up on it from the bottom, like so. Yeah, yep, the guide is out. Let's check for head tilt first while we're at it. Oh yeah, head tilt is fine. And yes, I realize I was checking it wrong. You have to check it like this in order to uh, get the head tilt right. So I'll have to remember that next time I'm into the 931. And uh, I'll just have the checker bar like so. I'll try to come around with my other hand to hold the head block. And uh, where's my adjustment? Again, self, you need your glasses off, so why did you put them back on? All right, let me just go in and adjust this, and we'll be off to the races. All right, guys, the ghost of uh, tech future again, just with a little correction here. This adjustment does nothing. It does not an adjustment at all. Basically, what this screw is, is it's there to just hold the head down, and it's also there to provide spring tension for the actual azimuth adjustment, on the other side of the head. So what I'm doing right now is wasting a considerable amount of time for nothing. In fact, if you want to adjust the uh, head height on this deck, I think you would have to go in and do shims. And I don't have that, so I didn't bother doing this at all. So, yeah, keep that in mind. Huh, we might have to leave it as is, because I don't know what's going on with this right now. Just trying to have a look-see figure out what the deal is. This is literally not changing one bit. And I've lost track of how many turns I've tightened this and loosened this, so... Pull the gauge out here for a second and we'll try the uh, path checker tape. I want to see what it does or what it looks like. I realize we're not actually doing any movement here of the... Ah, uh, there's molly coat on the dang guideposts. Okay, that should help that. Actually, I see no tape curl, so that might be fine as is. We're going to go with that, and we're going to make our adjustments in the scope. And yeah, so endeth video number one on the DD-99. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put the, put the uh, transport back in the deck, and we'll start video number two with the, uh, the alignment of these two s screws, I think. And also take a look at the wound flutter and make sure the transport's working right. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.